Hi guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Anime Podcasters. I'm your host, Hotshot Ginger, and with me I have... Well, I don't... Okay, well, this sucks. I can't think of a Ghibli-related pun, because I don't know how close we all are actually associated with this. So, just giant music. How's it going, buddy? Man, I'm good, and I'm excited for this topic. Let's get into one of the best Ghibli films out there. This one is top three. I don't, I don't care what anyone has to say. I think this one is one of the best ones out there, man. I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Okay. And with us, we also have our buddy, RG. Yeah. It's summertime over here. I'm hot, but I'm doing well. Yeah, I feel like that's yeah, kind man. of the same story for all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> let's cool off with some Ponyo. Yeah. Let's, let's cool off with some Ponyo. We're talking about Ponyo. We're talking about Ponyo. This has been an episode that I've been wanting to do for such a long time. Man, let's kick it off with this. First impressions when you watch this film. Let's start with you, Hotshot. Like, when you watch this, the first few minutes, the atmosphere, the vibe of it, what did you think? I'm just going to start off my thing, my thought by saying I am a very simple man. It is very hard to upset me. It is very hard to disappoint me. And Ghibli movies, especially with their openings, never do that. I already know the kind of vibe I'm going into. It's comfy. It's sweet. It's mystical. It's magical. And Ponyo really didn't disappoint with that in the aspect. Um, with it being underwater, I kind of got strong Little Mermaid vibes for a little bit there. Mm. But once it cut over to Sosuke being a shore town, then I'm like, okay, no, you know what? Yeah, this makes sense. But since it's Ghibli, the oh, yeah, this makes sense did not last long whatsoever. Really? How come? Ghibli movies are known to be mystical and shrouded in mystery until the story itself explains it. Like, uh, we meet Ponyo's father and mother. And there are a thousand questions when they come on screen. <laughs> Very fair. We find Ponyo is a fish that escapes, like if Finding Nemo had the gall to actually go out of the water. And, mm. and magically, she grows limbs and legs and turns human. <laughs> I know it's a temporary state until uh, later on in the movie, but it's still just that thing of like a whole lot of things happen, but you don't get an explanation until like the last maybe 20 minutes of the film. But that's just how mm -hmm. Ghibli rolls, and I'm not really complaining. Right, right. What about you, RG? Um, same thing. Simple man. I uh, really love uh, the animation, especially for... <laughs> for a movie yeah. that it's kind of old and it's like I don't like to see it because that makes me old but I just really like the animation the way the story is told it's really com comfy comforting um, uh, and yeah at first uh, like Hotshot said it's a little bit confusing because uh, I'm, me I'm, I'm looking at the movie and I'm like why is this fish bigger than the other one and then I'm just focusing on that <laughs> for the rest of the movie so yeah, it was a good experience. And also, I watched uh, this movie especially for the, the the podcast. I haven't watched it movie um, until twenty twenty three. Right. I, I don't think it's that old though. It came out in two thousand and nine. Like that's not that's like what fourteen fifteen years ago. It's not like an old movie. Like you got old Ghibli movies from the nineties, like Palm Poco and stuff. Like I think that. This 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 animation holds up like a decade and a half later. I really enjoyed the, like uh, the storyline and everything. Um, what I what I really think uh, was well said there is like the the mystical vibe of it, uh, Hotshot, because we we have a character in in Sosuke that I don't want to say like falls in love, but is very enchanted by uh, Ponyo and and um, her presence. And obviously Ponyo has a whole struggle with, I, I think it's uh, Ponyo's dad basically that runs the sea. This like a Machiavellian uh, scientist type character. That's like Ponyo belongs in the sea and only in the sea and steals Ponyo away from Sosuke very early on in the series. But you know, it comes back around and, and uh, Ponyo gets the, her own independence. I mean, there's so many cool aspects in, in this film. Um, maybe uh, as a jumping point to, to my introduction, um, what did you think about Ponyo's like evolution as a character, like going from the sea to the earth, back to the sea and growing up there and coming back stronger, like throughout the film? What did, what did you uh, think about that hotshot when you saw like Ponyo's growth as a character? Like I said, initially, I got strong uh, my, uh, Little Mermaid vibes. Because it seemed kind of similar mm. to what Ariel did in Little Mermaid. 
Because right. she was in the sea, she went up to the surface world, was fascinated by it, decided uh, to go up there. Like, yeah, I'm leaving. Th- I'm leaving certain things out of Little Mermaid, but its message stays the same. She goes up there. She's forced back. But then when she goes for her uh, own independence, she decides to uh, stay on land. It's kind of it's kind of similar because it's Ponyo actually making her own choice instead of just listening to her father because she listened to her own curiosity. But I think she only went because of Ham. Th- this little this little fish has an obsession with Ham, like to the point where. All, all reviews that I've seen for it, and keep in mind I've only watched like three, all reviews have this same running joke where she is just going up for ham because that is the first thing she dives in after like when it's in the ramen or when it's presented to her as human food or like it even, it even does serve as a plot point because she said, I want ham when she goes back to the water. And her father freaks out that she's had human food. Right. I remember this. Yeah, ham was definitely a bit of a meme in there. I can't lie. <laughs> Which is still a meme that I quote. Like, and as much as I love ham, I kind of just scream ham. <laughs> kind of like Ponyo does. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm a very simple man, and this is a very simple meme. I don't have a reason to hate it. I'm just not going to be posting it everywhere. But I think this, uh, the hauntings, it, I, I, I like it because it's kind of realistic. When you're a child and nothing's, everything's new to you, sometimes you would just found this one thing that you like. Either it could be ham, either it could be uh, One Piece or Pokemon, some one of us. And then you get obsessed for it for a long time. And I think... It, Without knowing it, it's really relatable. It is. I I, I I can't disagree with that. It is definitely very relatable. I just feel absolutely called out. I'm sorry <laughs> that I have two fandoms that take over my life, RG. What is your damage? <laughs> it's, it's okay if you have two fandom that takes over your life. My point is, what, do you, what are the other things in your life, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, true. There, I have three. <laughs> there you, you go. You got me. You... Progress, bro. Progress. You got me. So, Jan, what did you think about the relation between Sosuke and when he grows his relation with Ponyo? Oh, wow. Listen, like these two are, these two are absolutely adorable. There's no other way to put it. Like, Sosuke, I feel like it's like, a, obviously I said like fall in love. But it's it's truly a friendship, mm-hmm. those two. It's a super strong friendship where they're there for each other no matter what. And it's got to be pretty special when you go from fish to human. Like, that's that's some that's some A plus level friendship, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't lie. I absolutely love how... Ponyo looks out for uh, Sasuke and, and vice versa. Sasuke really goes out of his way to like make sure Ponyo stays in the bucket, has enough water, is well fed, <laughs> gives her <laughs> ham. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I love it. I think it it, it grows a lot and it, it shows like uh, the caring side of Sasuke uh, very strongly. Uh, that's my opinion. So, Jan, you said that it was a big deal for her to not become a, not stay as a fish and become a human. Does it mean that if you had the choice, Jan? Would you would you prefer to be a human or a fish? I'm upset because that's actually where I was. <laughs> I got you there. I mean, who wouldn't want to want to be a fish, bro? That looks amazing, if, especially if you have magic power too. <laughs> uh, but right. I totally agree. I'll be a Vaporeon. <laughs> yeah, but I totally agree with you. Uh, I really love how their relationship are really purely strict on on friendship, and it's crazy how in such a few, uh, such a a few moments and a lot of large uh, amount of times they become so close and they care so much for each other and they even prove it with your action as you describe it i think it's really also relatable uh, for some friendship that you just with some people that you just clicks and you just become f- friends with them and you be ready to do anything for them absolutely absolutely um hacha what were you gonna say earlier I mean, with the uh, with how the friendship starts between Sosuke and Ponyo, it kind of treats it like, yes, she can speak, but it kind of treats it like she's his pet goldfish. Like, that's why she's taking such good care of her. Like, uh, yes, yeah, she, is, she is mystical. She does speak. And it, it's basically like a kid getting a new pet for the first time. I'm not saying it's not the same kind of care, 
that would eventually come out of it, but I'm saying I see the same kind of thing when when it comes to pets. Ah, uh, you're kind of right. Mm, seeing okay, that in that see, perspective, you know, right? Like really on really only on that instance, like when she's in the pail. Like by the time that she goes back to uh, back to the city and then comes back as a human, then yeah, the kind of love and kind of devotion changes quite drastically. But that's all I was saying at the beginning. So no, like I was saying, solid point. The uh, where I was gonna go afterwards with that is uh, obviously uh, we're talking about bonds here. We're talking about the bonds with the parents, and we're talking about the bonds with the. Um, um, sorry, we're talking about the bonds with uh, Panyo and Sosuke, but there's also Sosuke's parents, you know, like Sosuke's father up on the boat and doing like lighting signals to Sosuke. I thought that was so adorable. Uh, what did you think about like the family dynamic in this anime? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, about I think families is, is kind of everything. Like, fam- there's um, Ponyo who's been trapped between her new family that she loves very much and her old family that tries to to get her back. Uh, and like you said, the father, yeah, everything resolves a little bit of our family because Sosuke's loves for the sea comes from his father, who's a captain, which influences his father for Ponyo, which is a fish. Uh, and <laughs> Ponyo's family is after her, so everything is resolved a little bit around family. So I think it's one of the main. It's, I think it's one of the main subject, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty good. What did you? What, Absolutely. What did you Absolutely. think about it, Hotshot? About the. F- he only loves Ponyo so much because she's a fish. I'm sorry, I tuned out, but that's <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. How about this? Let me let me throw this to you, Hotshot. In that case, we talk about like family bonds. You know, um, we 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 talk about Sosuke's family, but you know, there's also Ponyo's family. I'm talking about the F- Fujimoto, the the father of uh, Ponyo, the one that the sea sorcerer, basically. Um, he's like a villain, but he also has like not the worst of intentions. I think he just wants to protect Ponyo, and that kind of comes between the relationship between Ponyo and Sosuke. Uh, what did you think of of Fujimoto as a as a character? I th- I think he held his own pretty. I mean, well he's not necessarily a villain. He is just an overprotective father that wants to protect his daughter, and seeing that she's growing up, especially growing up in the human world, is something he just didn't isn't ready for and just doesn't want to see. Mm. But like when the town floods, he's the one who's getting like the old people and the other uh, citizens down in the air pocket bubble. Like he's the one watching over them. That's true. That is true. After the sea goddess, I think helps him down there. Mm -hmm. Who The sea goddess is like nine stories tall (laughs) and Pano's mother. And this is an average height man. This is a question. I don't know if he's average height. I don't, okay, I don't like he's se- even height. like seven and a half feet or like eight feet or something. That is not the size of three skyscrapers. That <laughs> and that is an image that Fair has enough. plagued my mind since I first saw the movie. Uh, and, and Giant, um, what did you think about the music? What did you think about uh, the song cover and the team song? Okay, so we're talking about gorgeous orchestral music in uh, Ponyo. We're talking about very like melodic and vibey tracks with like nice strings and leads that support the storyline and really make you feel happy and sweet. I feel like major chords. I feel um, good vibes only uh, type of music uh, to put it uh, simply. Um, and uh, I don't know if I should, uh, I-, I-, I have a surprise, I'll-, I'll save the rest of my answer uh, at- for the very end of the episode, because I do have something I want to include at the end of this for the music of, uh, of Ponyo. Um, so I'll-, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but the thing is, like, Hacha, like, like it- we, didn't even know- we don't even need to, to say Ponyo specifically. Like, the music in Studio Ghibli films are just another level. Yeah. They're just great. You just can't go wrong with any soundtrack of any Ghibli film. They're just all super, super good. Like, the... They, they all just make you feel good, man. Hmm. Like, I I can't really add anything, to be totally honest, because A, I don't know track names. B, Studio Ghibli music is just objectively good. <laughs> and Exactly, C, that's just my point, yeah. Yeah, and C, I don't remember listening to anything, like, in previous or in recent months, so I don't have, like, any strong things to come out with. For sure. I actually went to a a, a little show the other uh, few weeks ago, um, and it was just like all Ghibli music covers. Oh, right. I didn't even ask you how that was. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. It was just like a, a teacher 
with her students, and they uh, they played po- song tracks uh, from uh, from Ponyo. They did Totoro. They did, they really ran the whole Ghibli gamut. It was such a good vibe, and uh, oh, I love Ponyo. Uh, the thing is, this what I love about this film is that you have some comedy. You have some character development. You, I think this is one of the best character developing films in Ghibli. Now that I think about it, Ponyo, like, literally is what is one of the only characters I can think of that has like multiple tra- transformations in Studio Ghibli. You know, you have like Ponyo the fish, Ponyo the half human, Ponyo the full human. You know what I mean? Like the other only other transformation I can think of is like in uh, Spirited Away, the parents becoming pigs. You know, it's like pig or not pig. <laughs> I don't. I mean, in you know, what I mean, in the cat returns. In the cat returns, the main character is slowly transforming into a cat. Oh, that's true. That is true. A lot of transformations in Ghibli films. That Hi, Jayan. Like I said, mystical. <laughs> mystical. Yes. Hi, Jayan. Did I told you that was my? It was my first and only Ghibli movie. <laughs> No way. Are yeah, that's why I told you at, at the beginning. I was like, oh, yeah, this is like one of my first movie of um, my first Ghibli movie in 2023. So you're speaking about all this, about all those uh, other as a title. And I'm like, the cow, the what? <laughs> and then the cow, the, the pig, the what? <laughs> uh, so here's, a, here's what I have to say to this, RG. I'll just say this to you. Welcome to good anime. Welcome to good anime. Hotshot, this man has only seen one Ghibli film. And it's the one we recommended. We're gonna do more Ghibli episodes, um, Hot no. Shot. I, I, are you are you with me or are you with me? Good. All I can say, RG, is don't watch my neighbor Totoro. Oh no no no! We're not we're not rehatching this. We're not rehatching. Why this. is it bad? <laughs> you know what? We are rehatching this. Yes, no, it's amazing. Yes, it's great. It's yes. really good. No 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 no. RG RG, he's memeing. He's memeing. Okay, listen to me. My neighbor Totoro is basically like. The, the iconic film of Ghibli. Like, literally, Totoro is the mascot of Studio Ghibli uh, films, okay? And Hotshot has this really abnormal fear with Totoro. I mean... He just thinks Totoro is a very he's scary, scary, killing uh, monster. He's Thank not. you. Well, I've, seen a, Thank I've you. seen a poster. No. I've seen no. a poster, and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, but you haven't seen the film. You haven't seen the film. Uh. You can't tell me it's scary if you haven't seen the film. That's judging a book by its cover, well, RG. Ah, it feels good to win. <laughs> what? You haven't won anything. You haven't won anything. Yeah, okay, so don't judge a book by its cover. No, don't judge a book by its cover in the sense that, like, um, my name, Totoro is a very caring character that looks out for for, 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 for others. Um, but, like, we're, we're getting, we're getting beh- besides the point yeah, here. Yeah. I wanted to, let, let's, let's, let's hop back into Ponyo here a little bit. Okay. The candle book and how prepared everyone was what did you mean by that hot shot let's get into that so the candle boat is just a toy that uh, sosuke had but thanks to ponyo's magic it's able to grow in size so the candle boat is is propelled by a candle just in the small engine area and the flame is what gives it light like basically it travels by heat and it's just the fact that the entire town flooded like i know it's a harbor town but there are a lot of people out on boats like that were ready for this kind of thing. It's a mystical flood. <laughs> it's a mystical flood. Well, yeah, but do the characters know it's a mystical flood? Because there are a lot of people out on just random rafts that they have like stashed around their house. You're being too <laughs> rational, bro. Everybody has you're a boat. Yes, rational. I am, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull a page from your book, and you're trying to be me, and it's not a good dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> I hate being logical. You know this. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> you are an agent of chaos. Am I the only one who, like, when I saw the boat, I was like, oh, it's only going to be this big? I thought she was going to create a full, like, boat, boat, not, not like... Toy boat. <laughs> I mean, if she was making no, a I thought, boat boat, how the hell is a small child like Sosuke supposed to drive that thing? I don't know. Magical exactly. power? It's not a Mr. Beast video, bro. Oh, now you use... It. Sosuke has no magical power. Okay, so now you use logic? Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stand back. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> Ghibli, may be, Ghibli may be mystical, but the characters who have powers remain the characters who have powers. Sosuke has nothing. He could have swim in the back. Right. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to write a movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't write a movie. <laughs> I just podcast about them. Uh, exactly. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, if you didn't like my logic on that one, you're really not gonna like my logic on my next point. Right, what is it? <laughs> go Hit ahead. me up. I'm gonna. Just, just let's so just make, go all the way. My here. my next one was uh, 
how the town got back to itself, like even though it did take a bit of time after the flood happened. Uh, I work in flood and fire restoration. Oh, that's true. And even a single home can take over a year to build back, like even from just a little damage. <laughs> and if the entire house is gone, that can take multiple years. <laughs> And this was an entire flood that basically put an entire island underwater. <laughs> yeah, but magic, bro. And really? yet when Ponyo comes... I mean, yeah, that's really what it boils down to. But unfortunately, because I work in the field that I do, I can't help but think of the logistics of it anymore. And I hate that <laughs> so much. Because when I worked at the theater, I thought about this. And I'm like, oh, no, magic. Yeah, no, that, that does solve everything. I'm good. But now that I work in a field that this movie is related to, I can't help but think of the actual real-life ramifications of a town flooding. <laughs> Actually, talking about the town and, and, and real life with this movie, I was looking into it. Did you know that the town in, in Ponyo is actually based on a real town in Japan? Oh. I don't really have a doubt of that because I think a lot of places that uh, Ghibli takes inspiration from are real locations. But guys, if you're listening to this episode, I'm talking to the audience here. Take a moment and look up the Tomonora port in Japan. And I'm just kind of going over it on Google Maps right now. I'm getting like Ponyo vibes from this place. Oh, it's like it's a port town in Japan. Is it? Is it like? Is it Very like a beautiful. super small Very island, beautiful. or it's kind of yeah. big? No, no, no. It's 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 a port town. It's on oh, the it's um, okay. it's on the uh, the coast of of one of the uh, uh, of Japan. It's between oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Japan and then uh, I'm seeing here uh, Shikoku. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's 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 in the like. Islandish formations of, of uh, Japan at the in the south of it. Anyways, just uh very cool that like you know anime being like pulled from like real life like that like inspired like that. That's I, I find that always very interesting. Uh, for sure, for sure. But I mean, I mean, it's not uncommon like not even just for Ghibli but regular anime yeah. to do that on on a regular sure. basis. And I'm not saying this to to divert anything. But the first uh, the first four regions of Pokemon are based on different regions in Japan. Oh. And the fifth generation is based off New York City. The sixth generation is uh, based on France. The Holy. seventh is based on Hawaii. And the eighth is based on... Not Great Britain. Scotland? No. Like, some somewhere around... Like, the UK, basically, in general. Like really? it's not it's not it's not uncommon for anime to take inspiration from real life places and put them in there, even if it is under a different name. Right. 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 I wish it had. A, I, I mean, wish it had one on it's Canada. Different, man, but it's, I think it's no. Yeah. Really no. Cool. I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. I'm not trying to step on step on your toes and say this is an invalid point or anything like that. I'm just saying that it does happen. Yeah. yeah no. It absolutely does happen. I think it's cool because it adds a layer of 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 like reality to the. Uh, to the anime <laughs> itself, um, so uh, no, very cool. They really choose. Um, and okay, then no. the other thing uh, I want, the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, the animation style, um, like uh, how this animation style versus like Disney today and the animes and like other old animes. Like, what were, what were your thoughts on that, RG? Um, yeah, well, as we said earlier, it's a very cozy, simple type of a animation, and like you said, it's I, I think it's it, it's kind of old from my perspective, but it's not too old from yours or whatever but uh when you compare it to the other type of anime anime that uh that got out maybe the most popular one like attack on titans uh, jujutsu kaisen and everything i feel even though it has an older vibe that it's like even more like the animation it's more clean like i feel like even if it's older because People really took their time to put the their craftsmanship and their passion into this. I feel like it holds it will always be good, always hold up to the age, and it will it's even better yeah, than most of the animation that we can see on all the anime to, on today's age. What do you think? I just it like I said, through Ghibli just is go it's just it's always gonna be better. I j well, not better, but it's always going to just be high ranking in just animation, in the music, in storyline, and 
you're lo you're watching some of the best anime films that will ever be made when you're watching a Studio Ghibli film. So it doesn't surprise me that the animation holds up, in your opinion, uh, 15 years after the, the this film comes out. You know, I mean, this film has won a bunch of awards. I'm looking here. It's just a great movie. It just holds up on, on all aspects. It, it's, it's not just the animation. It's the storyline. It's the character development. It's the music. It's the film as a whole. Uh, it's the uh, tones of the film. It's like it's the uh, voice acting. It's the sound design. It's everything as a whole. This film just holds up, in my opinion, uh, just like any other Ghibli film. Yeah. I'm kind of with you on that one, Jaden, that it does, uh, that it's true with most of uh, Ghibli movies. But you you would be pretty hard pressed to find anyone who dislikes them or just like does not like any yeah. of the Ghibli movies. That isn't to say that like all Ghibli movies to everyone are flawless masterpieces, because there are one or two that I just do not like and can't get into. But it's the fact that it covers so much ground with their with their story and their iconic animation. Ghibli is, to my knowledge, the only one who actually animates the way they do. And that's kind of what makes it stand out because it's one that has stood the test of time and that has still remained. Yeah, absolutely. I like. I can't. I can't disagree with you on that one. Um, let's maybe slowly start bringing it home here. Are, were there other points that uh, uh, RG that you wanted to bring up before we start to giving? Yeah, I just wanted thoughts? to know uh, for both of your opinion, guys. Do you prefer? Because I think you you grew up with Disney, like me and most of people. Do you prefer the animation style of Disney or of Ghibli's movie? Ghibli. <laughs> with me, it really kind of depends. Oh, I, like I hate to be that guy, but it really kind of. depends. But you are that guy. <laughs> no, I, I, that's fair. <laughs> well, be, well, because like unlike Ghibli, that is one studio that animates most of their works the same. There were hundreds of different animation styles for different uh, Disney animation. So that's kind of why I'm like, it really depends on which piece of work you're talking about. Mm, that's true. That's true. And now with Disney, with all the new movies, now they're more like doing animation like Frozen, with the, like the movies Frozen, instead of doing like the old animation style for a Lion King and etc. So yeah. Yeah, because for, for a lot of studios, not just Disney, but for a lot of studios, 2D animation is dead. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate. Sadly. It, that, uh, that's why we are getting ones like Frozen or Brave or ones like mm, that instead of, like yeah. you said, classic 2D animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right. So I want to go to final thoughts, and then I have, I'm, I'm, I'll review, reveal my little surprise. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead first. I feel like I, I'm, I'm going to be a bit of a repeating of myself, but like this is top three Ghibli film, in my opinion. Um, it's such a fantastic film. We haven't really spoiled much here. So if you haven't watched this movie yet and you're listening to this, go watch Ponyo. Go watch Ponyo legally, <laughs> legally, and support the official release hotshot what are your final thoughts on ponyo i'm gonna piggyback a little bit off of you and just by saying that it isn't in my top three it is still really good it is still a really good ghibli film it's not in my top three but i could still recommend it pretty heavily like yeah. i love the character like this should go without saying with ghibli i feel but the characters are super cute the music is excellent the storytelling about what you'd expect from Ghibli, <laughs> and I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to make the assumption that the whole world knows what Ghibli is, because even RG just said this is his first Ghibli movie ever. But that's kind of the impression that I'm just under, that this is an iconic name that everyone knows at least something of. Right. All right. I see what you mean. Okay. Perfect. And RG, what is your? Well, um, this is my first Ghibli movie, so I would say this is the best Ghibli movie that I have ever seen. And uh, definitely, <laughs> even if you are, uh, a, if you have child or you are a child at heart, I would definitely recommend you this movie on a cozy uh, Sunday night. It's good. It's, it's really great. It's really good. Perfect. All right. So let me before we uh, leave to the hot shot plug and everything. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Um, I covered a song from Ponyo, um, and it has yet to be released, and I'm going to I'm gonna premiere it on the podcast. I'm going to premiere it on the podcast right now. So uh, you guys, unfortunately, RG and Hotshot will not be able to hear it because it will be only in the edit. But uh, I will leave you with this. This is my cover of 
Ponyo on the Cliff by the Sea from the Ponyo film. So for myself, RG, and Hotshot, and my song cover, this has been another episode of... How do we do our outro underwater? <laughs> Anime <laughs> Podcasters. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Hey guys, Hotshot here. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Anime Podcasters. We have over a hundred other episodes for your entertainment found wherever podcasts are available, such as Spotify. We also release new episodes twice a month, so keep an ear out for us. You can follow the podcast at Anime Podcasters on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Giant Music's YouTube channel. Giant himself can be found on social media at Giant Music, as well as his own website, GiantMusic.com. Kyo, our artist for the podcast, can be found on Twitter and YouTube at GoPro Kyo, as well as his website, ccartgalleryportfolio.com. As for me, Hotshot, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter at Hotshot Ginger. As always, guys, thanks for listening to us. Hope to talk to you soon. Take care.